Hi, this is Paula J, and welcome to another episode of Secure Hacks Weekly. Today I'm with Adrian. Hi. Hi, and uh, Adrian is our cybersecurity specialist. How is it going? It's going great. How are you? Fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, so today's subject is as always very exciting because we're going to be talking about the WPAD queries. So uh, what are the details? Well, we're going to talk about a feature that is enabled by default in Windows. Mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty useful if you want to deploy a proxy for your enterprise. Yeah. Sure. Uh, but in fact, it's often misconfigured Very and because often. it's <laughs> yeah, and because it's enabled by default, it's it's pretty neat attack vector for or teamers or penetration testers. We I'm going to show you uh, what can really happen uh, if if you manage to deploy your own WPHD. Fantastic, and this is also the problem that we see pretty much at every customer site. Yeah, that's true. Okay, guys, time to learn the details. Let's dig in. So here we have typical Windows 10 installation. If this is enterprise environment, it is very likely that auto proxy discovery is enabled, even if the actual proxy is not deployed. This is very common configuration. We can verify that by going to internet settings in internet options. So connection LAN settings and this checkbox here means that software which supports proxy, so all modern browsers, etc., et will use those settings. Of course, unless explicitly overwritten in browser settings themselves. And what this means is that WPAD, which is Web Browser Auto Discovery Protocol, would be used to determine the proxy settings. The settings are stored in a special file and the location of that file is automatically determined. You could also specify the location manually by checking this option uh, or even use the proxy server explicitly. But we want to test the auto configuration. So let's leave this option on. And now let's open the browser. We could test in any browser, but I will go with Google Chrome just because it offers some nice features regarding the network settings. And we can also take a peek uh, to see what's going on inside. Those are the real internals of the configuration. So make sure you know what to do before you start editing something. So in the proxy here, we can see the original proxy settings as well as the effective proxy settings. So currently the direct connection is in use, meaning no proxy was detected. Before I show you something, let me go to the capture and reset the capture event state. Um, and now the moment I click on reapply settings, new captures were recorded. And we, if we go here, we can see that WPAD event is recorded. There is exact time and date for that event. And we can see that no settings were found, no pack file was found. So the event one was canceled and no proxy settings were changed. That's why we are still seeing a direct here. Let's look at that under Wireshark as well. So Wireshark is a network sniffer, which is going to be covered in another episode of Hugs Weekly, so stay tuned. But for now, we will only use it to capture the few requests for WPAD. I will be listing on the Ethernet interface. Now I will switch to browser and click on this button again. Okay, uh, let me stop the capture. The 101 IP is this computer address. Keep that in mind, we will be using that IP later. As you can see, there are several protocols involved. There is DNS, which is multicast DNS. There's also LLMNR, local link multicast name resolution protocol. There's NBNS, which stands for NetBIOS. Sometimes you can even find the DNS query over here. What this means is that WPAD has a lot of backup options. There's even DHCP option to find out the proxy settings. 
but what you will find in your configuration depends on system settings. But those are the defaults. So as we can see, no one is responding for those queries and no proxy settings are detected. But what would happen if someone responded? And to find out, let's switch to another machine with Kali Linux. Now, this Kali Linux is located in the same network. It could be your corporate network or just the same Wi-Fi network, maybe free Wi-Fi. It has static IP in the same subnet, so as you can see here, I will use a tool called Responder. It's installed by default in the Kali Linux, but I already did some modification to the config file. Let me show you. Only HTTP service is enabled. That's because we'll use that to serve our malicious WPHD file. And in the same file below, you can find the script itself. It's here. You are correct if you notice that this is a JavaScript file. And this is scary, right? Fortunately, only a small subset of language is available here. So no Bitcoin mining for now. And I already did minor modification here. So the proxy is set to my IP on port 88. And otherwise, if the proxy is disabled, the direct communication will be used. Now let's run the responder tool with minus A option. This is a special mode in which the messages are only analyzed, but no actual interruption of the traffic takes place. I also have to specify the name of the interface. So, as you can see here, most of the services are disabled and we are already poisoning all those messages that we've seen uh, earlier. We could wait for new events to occur, but let me speed things up and switch to Windows system. So we're back on the Windows. Uh, I could just click on, on this, but instead let me show you that relaunching the browser will also generate the request that we want. So now the Kali should already see at least three requests, uh, one for each protocol for WPAD server. And I can also show you that we currently have a communication. Maybe let's try HTTP. As you can see, we have a connection to external web page. So back to the Kali. So you can see uh, a lot of uh, queries, never mind those uh, weird ones, uh, but you can also see the WPAD in the um, DNS. There's also LLMNR requests for WPAD and so on. Uh, but still, we are not responding to those, right? So let's change that. I will close the responder. I will first open verb suit and set up it to capture the traffic on that interface which are, we are listening. There is another episode on verb suit on Hacks Weekly channel, so make sure to watch it as well to find out what else can you do with verb. For now, we are going to change a configuration of the proxy because we need to specify the correct interface by default it listens on the local host only so i want to edit that and use specific address in that network and that's it i don't really want to intercept anything so let's just switch to this window and burp is ready so now we want to modify the command line and just remove this minus a option 
and now we're in the in the actual attack mode. So let's go to the windows again and go to our example com. All right. So what really happened? Looks like nothing because we did get the same page and so on. Uh, but let's go to the Kali and see if maybe we manage to capture some traffic. So here you can see that responder actually points on the answers for all of the requests. And there was HTTP request for proxy configuration coming from the Chrome browser. This is very likely our victim. By looking at what Burp managed to capture, we can see that this request to example.com was actually recorded. So we can we have a full view into what data was transferred and all the other requests, like for instance this one generated by Chrome itself, can be captured. We could, of course, enable intercepting just to modify the traffic in some way but instead of playing with the burp itself let's try to analyze the attack again okay so let me restart the responder and i will go to windows and we will see what the wireshark and the google internals are showing and when i open the browser let me go to the internals again. Uh, maybe I'll try to rest the capture and reapply the proxy settings again. And if we go to the capture now, oh, sorry, here, we can look up the WPD job. And this time we have five entries for that. So by looking at that, we can see that this time uh, the request succeeded and someone responded. We can go and investigate the WPD file manually. So we will use the fact that the Kali will respond to that host name and we can download the configuration script. We can just use the notepad to open that file. The problem is that this is a one liner and we need to somehow fix the formatting here. So let's do that. Um, there's another if here and another one here. Okay, so logic is that if the browser tries to access localhost or something that resembles localhost, it will be direct. If we the browser tries to access something that is called proxy server, this is uh, part of the configuration for responder, uh, it also goes direct. But for anything else, there's a special proxy. So this one is our Burp listener, that's why we received the traffic. And there's also a backup option. So in case we disable the burp, the browser will, will simply use the other option. So uh, the attack will not be easily detected because the browser will be smart enough to just, uh, to just go direct anyway. And no loss of connection will occur. Uh, there is a very handy reference. Uh, to what you have available in the uh, in case of the pack script so there's a bunch of functions that are available to use when you, when you are creating your own configuration uh, but i wanted to point out for instance that there's this function dns result that you can use to resolve the host name uh, so that you can operate on the IP addresses instead of the host names. Um, the issue is that if there is a malicious WPAD in in, uh, in place, 
and the attacker is also controlling the DNS server, then by doing those requests, there is some part of information leakage to the DNS server itself. So keep in mind that there are some ways of uh, stealing an information using the WPAD file. Um, also, there are some uh, ways of limiting the days or dates when the proxy is actually working. So that's also interesting to, to, to know. Now, if we go to the Wireshark, which I had uh, set up, So in Wireshark, we can see that there were some requests uh, to multicast DNS and other protocols, just as before. But this time, someone actually responded. And of course, uh, we can see by looking at the IP that this is our Kali system. So because of dot 5 IP. And Kali was kind enough to hijack all of those requests and responds to every single query so that later uh, when the server, when the browser asked for the WPAD script, it was served from our Kali system, right? Uh, one of the things that it's often misconfigured when serving a WPAD file is that it doesn't have the valid content type. It has to be this content type, nothing else. Uh, so if your enterprise configuration is using the proxy, but this particular thing is misconfigured, your proxy will not work anyway, as someone uh, might still be able to hijack your communication. So, okay, so we've seen that playing with proxy might be dangerous. If you don't need this feature, then just use GPO or something similar to disable the setting across all the devices. If you need auto discovery, make sure you understand where system searches for WPAD configuration, which ones are preferred and so on. It's also important to make sure that all the browsers in the environment are the modern browsers, because if the browser is few years old, then there were certain issues with the WPAD. For instance, one was able to recover the URL part of otherwise encrypted communication. And also there was pretty huge vulnerability in the old implementation for Internet Explorer. So using WPAD, one could actually own your entire system. So thank you for your attention. This is everything for today. See you in the next episode of Hacks Weekly.